You've probably heard about a gooey, sticky substance called oil sands. Oil sand is basically regular sand, like the kind you'd find on a beach, that has some oil trapped in it. It is black, sticky, and smells like oil. Oil sands are important because people in Canada use energy every day. And some kinds of energy come from, let's well, right, oil. Getting the oil out of the oil sands is a complicated process that requires a lot of people, big machines, and a lot of science. We're going to explain how we get the oil out of the oil sands, and we'll introduce you to some of the scientists who work on oil sands research for Natural Resources Canada at the Federal Government Lab in Devon, Alberta. Now, these scientists are working to find better, more efficient, and environmentally responsible ways to get the oil from the sands and then change it into things we use every day. Where and how do we use oil? The oil is used to make gasoline and diesel for our cars and trucks. It is also used to make plastics for everyday things like computers and cell phones and certain fabrics. So where do we find oil sands? Most of Canada's oil sands are found in northeastern Alberta and northwestern Saskatchewan. This accounts for about 146,000 square kilometers, or roughly the size of the provinces of Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island combined. Now that we know where to find oil sand, what is it? And how do we get the oil from it? Earlier, we said that oil sand is like regular sand with oil trapped in it. But it also contains a few other things. Oil sands are made up of 83% sand, 4% water, 3% clay, and about 10% is bitumen. Bitumen is a special word that scientists use to describe the type of oil that is trapped in the sand. So now that we know what we're talking about, how do we get the oil out of the sand? We're going to show you how this happens and some of the science involved in making it happen. We will start with extraction, which is getting the oil out of the sands. Then we'll look at froth treatment. That's a way to get the bitumen even cleaner. Once the bitumen is cleaned, then it goes for upgrading, which is a way to prepare the bitumen for refining, the final step before it becomes fuel. We'll also take a quick look at what happens to the sand once the oil is removed and talk about how water plays an important role in the cleaning process. Then we'll take a look at some of the future science we're working on, such as bioprocessing and future fuels. Now, let's get digging. The oil sands are dug out of the ground with huge shovels and dumped in very large trucks that can carry 400 tons in a single load. The bitumen ore is then trucked to a crusher and dumped. Here, the bitumen ore is crushed and mixed with hot water. This is the first step of the extraction process. Dr. Randy McCullough will explain how this first extraction step works. Here's an example of oil sands from the Athabasca region. And if you look closely, you can see that it's basically oil plus sand, hence the name. Now, to get that oil off of the sand, we need an awful lot of water. And I'll use this demonstration sample to illustrate how that works. So if we just add some hot water, actually it's almost just warm water, a little bit of mechanical energy by shaking it, and what will happen is the oil will separate from the sand. So if I stir it a bit, you can see the layers forming. At the very top is the oil, and you can see at the bottom I'm stirring up the sand. It's getting cleaner and cleaner as the oil separates to the surface. And you can see in the middle zone some relatively clean water. And if we wait a while, that water will get very clean. We'll have a nice clean sand at the bottom. And that's the essence of the oil sands extraction process, simply hot water and mechanical energy. Sometimes we have to use some chemistry and add some chemical additives, but often we don't. If we have 500 grams of oil sands and do an extraction process, this is all that we get. About 100 grams of bitumen. You can see why we want to run the extraction process hot, because at room temperature, this bitumen is very, very sticky. Very difficult to move it from place to place, 
almost impossible to pipeline. This isn't a pure bitumen. There's a little bit of water and clay in the bottom of this jar. Before this can go to a refinery or an upgrader, we need to remove that water and solids. And that happens in a froth treatment step, which cleans up the hydrocarbon, remove the water and solids, and get it to a pure enough state so it can go on to a, an upgrader and then a refinery to produce crude oil and the gasoline and diesel that we burn in our vehicles. So as Dr. Makula stated, once the first step of the extraction is completed, we have a substance that still contains some water and fine clay particles. To remove the rest of this water and fine clay particles, the bitumen undergoes a process called froth treatment. Dr. Chandra Angle will show us how the bitumen froth is mixed with a solvent to remove the rest of the water and fine clay particles. Froth is made up of bitumen, solid particles, and water. So in order for the bitumen to be useful, this froth has to be cleaned up. We need to remove the water and we need to remove the solid particles. Water and bitumen seem to have the same density, so we have to add something called solvents. And solvents is like a paint thinner. It will make the froth, the bitumen in the, in the froth more uh, flowable. We can have it flowing. So in the process, we do that. We add solvent. And as you can see, it will mix a little bit better and it's a little bit thinner. This is like when you mix chocolate with water. So I keep mixing this. The water will eventually fall, drop down, but not all of the water comes out. In the froth, you've got a certain amount of solids and um, water in there that has to be further cleaned. Now in this bitumen here, we've got tiny, tiny water droplets left and solid particles in there, which has to be further cleaned up. We look at it in the microscope and find methods or tricks in which we can encourage these water droplets to merging into bigger water droplets so they can be separated out. We started with oil sand and we've gone through the extraction process, which means that the bitumen is clean and it'll flow easier. So it is now ready for upgrading. What's upgrading? Upgrading is a process that changes the chemical and physical structure of the bitumen by using high temperatures and substances called catalysts. Catalysts are special substances which speed up the chemical reactions that take place in an upgrading complex that creates synthetic crude oil. Dr. Jin Wen Chen will tell us how upgrading and catalysts work. The terms density and viscosity are used to indicate the heaviness of the crude oil and how easily it will flow at room temperature. Upgrading is a process that converts heavy oil and residue from light crude oil into a hydrocarbon product with a density and viscosity similar to those of light crude oil. This is achieved by using heat to crack big molecules into smaller ones. Upgrading process may also involve high temperature, high pressure, catalyst, and hydrogen. Therefore, energy is consumed. So upgraded crude oil is also called synthetic crude oil. We are developing new upgrading processes, technologies, and catalysts that can achieve higher efficiency to reduce related energy consumption. A catalyst is a substance that speed up chemical reactions to get desired product without changing itself. Upgrading technologies, processes, and uh, catalyst way are developing, are tested and are verified with these pilot plant reactors. We use this unit to test our technologies and the catalyst to efficiently and effectively remove sulfur and the nitrogen content in oil. In industry, this process is called hydrotreating. After hydrotreating, the sulfur and the nitrogen are removed 
from the oil and the product is much cleaner. As Dr. Jin Wen Chen explained, upgrading changes bitumen from a heavy form of oil, bitumen, to a lighter oil called synthetic crude oil. Plus, upgrading removes sulfur and nitrogen to produce a cleaner type of oil and eventually a cleaner fuel. We also learned that Dr. Chen and the scientists at Natural Resources Canada are working to develop new technologies to make upgrading more energy efficient. 